Hello folks and welcome back to Medieval Total War. I am Kana Step and this is going to be part 17 of my early campaign where I'm playing as the Danes. And I wanted to get another episode in with this campaign just because it is sort of on the precipice of like p potential disaster if my heir does not come of age before my king and his brother die. I think we're going to be okay, but I just I just want to get this episode recorded so that I can have peace of mind. So if you are expecting a mercy in episode, apologies. I will get around to it soon. But I just want to get this one out of the way. Um, this campaign has taken a turn for, you know, all of a sudden it's kind of precarious. Not for any external military danger, might I add. The Mongols, though they are at war with me, don't seem too threatening. The Germans, though they are at war with me, also don't seem too threatening. They are locked in eternal combat with the French, and that's been that. They still don't want to get a ceasefire with me, and neither do the Mongols, although after I just whooped them last time, I can try again. And I can keep trying with the Germans as well. You know, I just... We'll, we can... We'll see. Let's get you... And talk to him. What's really precarious, though, is the fact that the Hungarians have attacked my fleets, and that has really sunk my income. I was sitting at over 100k, and now I'm down to 73,000, and that's just after a couple of turns at being at war with them. So our navies have been fighting, I've been winning the combats, but, you know, still, they have a few boats in the water. Now, I don't consider beating all of the boats to be an actual necessity of this conflict. I still think I should do it just for now, but I need to break contact with the Hungarian provinces and get that auto ceasefire as soon as possible. In fact, I should just do that here. Break contact and then anything here. Nope. You. Okay. So you can fight. So what's here? A bark. Okay. So let's split my fleets up. And we can fight this boat. And then what do they have here? A caravel? Okay. So I don't need to split my fleets up because I should be able to catch that with my own caravels. And let's see, this boat does not have to move. It's not in contact with the Hungarians. This boat can come up here and just try to kill this boat. And, and then we can just move off. Like here, does the sea region have to... No, he's fine there, and he's fine there. Okay. So we just need to, like, move him out of the Ligurian Sea next turn, and then uh, where would these boats have to move to? These boats have to move down to the Straits of Sicily. That should be fine. Okay. So a couple more turns before we can get that auto ceasefire with the Hungarians. And uh, it's gonna, our economy is gonna hurt. We're losing twelve thousand per turn. That it, that hurts. That really is a chunk of money. And that's probably gonna get worse, because I in, intend to attack the French, like almost right now. I want to wait one more turn before this trebuchet is finished being built here in Finland, and then I will have the artillery that I want to attack the French. And I will just take Wessex and Wales and Mercia. Just to have those provinces. And then I take I can take Ireland uh, later once this is resolved here. Once this is resolved, I should be able to get that auto ceasefire with the French in a similar manner. I don't have any land borders with them. They, luckily, the Germans have Flanders, so that should work out for me. And... I would just have to move my boats, you know, to a point where they do not border any French territories. And that should be okay, but in the meantime, I will be losing trade with one, two, three French ports. Is there more, or is it just the three? Three, three is enough, like three hertz. <laughs> That's going to be painful. That really is going to be painful, so... I need to tighten the belt. I think that it's... I think I'm done training soldiers. I can keep going with this here in Denmark, and then I can switch on over to boats. And Norway is building longboats. And Sweden is building caravels. Finland can finish that one more trebuchet, and then I can switch back over to caravels. 
Novgorod cannot build boats and let's not even like get any anything else. I, I think, how is our agents? I think I have bishops almost everywhere. I almost have full map coverage, but I can train a few more bishops, I suppose. They're cheap. They are cheap. And yeah, let's get some here in Livonia as well. And uh, Lithuania is fine. Yeah, let's just kind of not do that. And same with buildings. Like, I was thinking about trying to get a building here in Pomerania. And how about no? <laughs> like, how about we just kind of chill? You know? I don't feel like splurging on, on a, another building. Like, I was looking at Finland, and I'm thinking, what do I want here in Finland? A, a 8,000 florin fortress? Not really. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't really want that. So... I need the boats. The boats are important because I need that to obviously build back my trade lines. Once I have broken contact with the Hungarians and I, I guess the French as well, um, then I can go back into the Mediterranean. Now, luckily up here in the northern sea regions, I have dominance up here. There are some Sicilian boats, but they aren't really causing any issues. Other than that, there isn't anything else. In the Mediterranean, though, there's a lot more action going on. And as we've seen, other factions have been liable to start a war with me for no reason, as long as my boats seem like they might be easy pickings. So I got to go back into the Mediterranean in force. You know, I've been wanting to do this for a while now, but I just haven't had the means because I've been using my provinces for other reasons. You know, agents, artillery, troops, you, you understand, you get it. Um, but now it's time to go back in and force at least two boats per region just to try to dissuade that initial attack that starts a war that cost me a lot of money. Um, it could be a slow buildup that can be painful, but I think that that's the way that that's going to have to happen. And I think that that's why it's okay to keep building the long boats. Obviously caravels are nice. They're powerful. Their deep sea boats, their support costs are cheap, um, but just just to get that coverage, you know, just get the boats out. Even if it's a long boat, I just need the coverage right now, uh, and get that going. So, as I started, as I said when I was starting this episode, I do want to just kind of like focus on the king and his son. Uh, he, let's see, the son is six 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 years old, Prince Olaf. And the king is 51. So his son is going to be of age in 10 years. That's going to make the king 61 years old. If he can live to be that old, that would be preferable. But I think we can still be okay, even if it's just his brother that is the king when the son becomes of age. I think that that's how that works, but... That's, you know, the fact that I don't know that for sure kind of has me, you know, on edge a little bit. So that is why I'm doing this episode right now instead of a mercy and campaign. So in any case, I, I don't, I don't think that there would be another land battle. I don't think the Mongolians would attack me again. I did do a number on their heavy cav in that last battle. I'm not saying I killed nine units of heavy cav, but I beat up nine units of heavy cav. I don't think they can really pose much of a threat, but they might be feisty enough to go in there for another round. Oh wow, the Mongols are going right back in. Just after I said that they wouldn't. <laughs> oh man. I wonder what kind of chance they think they have. Yeah, the numbers are... Yeah, I guess they attacked with around 3,000 last time. And what are they going in with? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units of heavy cav. And then a lot of archers, yeah. A lot of archers, and yeah, the map looks like it does have some forests, so that is good. Hopefully that's in my deployment zone. That would be preferable. The Khan is down to being a two-star general, so he is losing his ability, his command ability, and these losses versus me. 
And it is always a question. I, I you know, it's risky that I have not been taking archers in my opening uh, armies. I just, man, I just feel like going heavy metal with the spears and the axes and the javelins and the feudal knights. It feels like the better choice for my opening armies. It does. You know, and then just saving the crossbows and the archers for my reserves. It just, it just feels better, you know, because if we do get to a second wave, which we have not yet so far in one of these battles, but if we do, I want archers fighting this. Yes, sure, there is still some heavy cav here, but I can at least chase down foot archers with my cavalry units. I can't chase down these units with feudal knights. Now, or nor mounted sergeants, you know. I'm pretty sure these Mongol horse archers can outrun both of those units. And maybe even defeat the mounted sergeants in combat. I don't know. But I can shoot them. Crossbows and archers can't shoot these units, you know. They will always, uh, foot based skirmishers will always win that duel with mounted skirmishers. First off, because they have more men, but also because I believe they get an accuracy buff, essentially. I think they have higher accuracy because they're. Uh, on the ground, I think. Maybe, or maybe it's firing rate or something. I, I think they just have better shooting stats in general, but so far it's worked. Also, the Mongols have been attacking me during the rain, it, it, kind of. I, I did clear up in the last battle, so that wasn't much of an issue, but I I do think that I want to keep going with the uh, the same army comp that I have been going in with. This map is looking a bit better for me. I like this map. Yeah, look at that. Big old forest right running down the middle of the map, and it's uh, wider, so I can potentially fit my army inside of it. There's a little bit of a village right here as well, which can muck up the uh, enemy's potential retreat if I can cause that. There's also, you know, this could be a cheeky idea. Have one of my cavalry flanks here, hidden in this forest so that we can threaten a rear charge on enemy units that might be trying to get around us. Now, I don't want to engage them on open ground fairly. Their cav would beat the crap out of my cav. But if we can kind of catch them on the retreat, or maybe if we can get into their archers, maybe that could be a good engagement for us. And also this forest runs all the way back to our deployment or to the edge of the map where we can get our reinforcements from. So. All in all, this is looking like it could be okay for us. Other than my surprise little concealed deployment on uh, that forest over there. Other than that, I'm going to be going with the same formations as I went in the last battle. Oh, they're going to be right here. Holy shit. Okay, we have to get formed up right away. Like, you guys need to hurry, 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 hurry. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, they're, they're right in our lap, aren't they? Let's get my general back a little bit, like you, like that. And then let's get my cav back here. Yeah, and then let's get one of my huskarls forming the spearhead, like that. And Mongol horse archers, okay, they, they want to see if they can get a little cheeky here. Well, my javelins are going to be behind my spears soon. They got to hurry up though. And sure, like, they want to take, like, a little poke shots at us, like, that's fine. We can actually, um, come up here and we can push up a little bit, like that. Yeah, that looks fine. And then my left flank, do I want to push them up at all? Um, they, they're really pushing heavy on this side, that's what's making me think this. I'm thinking about maybe pushing these spears over here, if they're going to go heavy. Like, why keep these guys? And then same with these javelins let's see why isn't it showing me where these spears are going yeah that's weird uh can you guys go back over yeah that was, that was, that was a weird little micro thing okay please get over guys I thought I told you to do that I don't know what the what are you what are you guys do, what are you doing <laughs> Freaking me out, man! Yeah, we could use spears over there faster. Maybe get you to run. Yeah, they're taking a wide flank. That's always 
Oh yeah, yeah. Oh man, what are you, guys? What what is going on? I thought I had you on. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't understand. My guys are on hold formation, are they not? Oh, I might just lose a unit of javelin men like that. I have no idea why they left their lines. I think maybe the spacing was off, and then they just kind of like reformed. That will happen sometimes, where if units are too crowded, they'll just kind of like move around a bit and shuffle, and <laughs> they shuffle their way right to their deaths. So, uh, yeah, that's real. That sucks. That really sucks. Um, those Mongol warriors just crush. Yeah, and I'm not even gonna like. Should I? I mean, yeah, I guess I can send my house carls to. If they're gonna chase into the forest, let's make them pay for it. And then, yeah, let's just get rid of that unit of javelins. Yeah, that that sucks. Definitely, that definitely sucks. And these javelins, man, their Mongols are just coming all the way around. Well, I need to bring these huskarls around here to like do that, and then javelins. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, they're kind of poking into our spears there. How are we doing up here? Us calls, please get back. Please get back. Please get back, us calls. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Alright, so we got this hole plugged up here. And yeah, we have horse archers right behind us. It's always nerve wracking. And javelins, let's kind of like get you like that. And, yeah, you just plug this hole. You do that, and, oh yeah, yeah, this is, this is dicey, man. <laughs> they came all the way around us, and, all right, now, hmm, I really want to charge in. Let's kind of just bring up my house cars a little bit more. And, yeah, those javelins are just going to run away. I don't know, yeah, they, they must, it must have been like a, a unit shuffle kind of thing where they the spacing's off and they're like, oh, I don't like, I can't fit here, and then they just move. <laughs> like that was that was pretty ruthless though. All right, let's get in here. Let's try to like defend the flanks of my spears that are getting attacked here. Um, I want to keep them in hold formation because they do have a unit right in front of them. I don't want them in on engage at will right now. And then let's just keep javelins like here and let's chase off these horse archers with my feudal knights. Just like get them out of the way. And then I can have my javelins come up here and help my house girls who are currently fighting two about to be three units of heavy cav. Right away one unit is running away. Let's get my javelins like here maybe and get, get a little flank attack in. House girls are just gonna beast mode this. They wanna fight on all three units. <laughs> like that's great. And then uh yeah yeah. Um Alright, let's get back. I don't want to chase. I just want to get- I just wanted to push back those. Wow, yeah, we're just pushing back everyone. And I see there's- I hear some fighting here. Okay, good. So let's get, make sure javelins are fighting there, and let's push up with my spears just to help that out. The Mongol Khan is right there, and nothing is happening on this side. Okay. Uh, javelins, you don't have to fight in melee because you have javelins that you can throw. This is a pretty cool thing that you can do where you throw javelins. Yep, it's pretty neat. Let's get my feudal knights in to get a rear charge in on those heavy cav. And yeah, javelins, throw your javelins. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, can we cut off this? No, they're running. Eh, eh, nah, they're running away, so just l let it be. How are we doing on this side? A little bit dicey? Oh, right, yeah, if it's gonna be dicey, then let's bring over uh, feudal knights. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, you can be the plug. The plug in the plug the gap there. And you guys can pile in now, go and engage at will, and pile in there. And I need to keep these spears there, just to guard, I think. Um, yep, you gotta charge here, you go here, and plug the hole. And then, how are we doing? We still have horse archers behind us, yeah, that's super annoying. Super annoying. Actually, let's do, let's get these field lights around and get a rear charge in. And these heavy calf here. It says they are losing badly, so we should be able to turn this around. And I want to keep. Okay, how about this? Put the spears up here, and then I can turn these huskarls around to try to get an engagement and on the flanks of these heavy calf. And then yeah, let's get a rear charge in with these knights here. Yep, that broke them. Yep, there we go. And now with all of that broken, let's try to get a let's try to get a rundown here. 
So yeah, Feudal Knights chase, Feudal Knights chase. Let's get an attack on the Khan. Like, just go for it, just push him. Because we can get a lot of these archers here. Push, push, push. And is there any... Oh, we still have those goddamn horse archers behind us. That's so annoying. Uh, whatever. You know, like, if they're gonna just stand there and shoot at us, then that's what's gonna happen. But yeah, let's get as many of these or, uh, archers as possible. And yeah, the Khan, like, kind of wants to fight. He's running away now. Yeah, he's running away. And... I need to make sure I have... Oh yeah, I completely forgot about my Feudal Knights in the... I was like, I have two more units of Feudal Knights. Where are they? And yeah, they're still hidden in the forest. Um... Hmm... This might be the time to activate one of them. <laughs> you guys help out against this unit of Heavy Cav. And then you guys just continue, like, chase on all of this if you can. It would be nice to have those two units of Feudal Knights to, like, help out with all of this. We really would. It really would. And we have two more units of Step Cav coming on. Hmm. So we ended up beating that unit of Heavy Cav. They are running away. And, yeah, Huskals, get back, please. And... Yeah, gosh, I, I kind of wanted to activate that other unit, but I also kind of want to keep them hidden so that I can whip them out for the next wave of Mongols. This step cav wants to help out against my feudal knights, and they they are. They're gonna that's gonna be really hard to for me to deal with. Hopefully these guys can hold on just for a little bit moment longer. Yeah, there we go. We broke them. Nice. Okay, perfect. Good hold there, good hold. And then, yeah, let's just push these guys off. They're going to be too fast for me to catch. But then if I can turn these guys around and try to get as many more of these Mongol warriors, try to get a big rundown on these guys if we could, that'd be really nice. And yeah, just push off those step calf for now. And yeah, more horse archers are coming on, so let's just retreat. Oh, wow, the, the Khan's coming back in. The Khan is coming in. Okay, let's get do this, and then let's get a recharge here. Yeah, if he wants to fight Axis and Spears... Axes and spears, axes and spears. Yeah, let's see if we can maybe kill him. In fact, can we get our cav back and rear charge him? Actually, yeah, let's see. Let's use all of our guys and try to trap him. Like all of our feudal knights that are up there. Let's see if we can trap him. Like you go, you go. Um, spears keep chasing. Huskarls, just get back. You have too much armor. You're too, you're too heavy. And they they might be done. This is usually what they do when they're done fighting, right? But if we could kill the Khan, that would be kind of neat. So I have my three units of Feudal Knights that are going to try to... Um, I don't know. You can at least run down these guys. And then, yeah, these two units can keep chasing them. And we'll see if we can run them down. Oh, man. We've just about caught him. We've just about got him. He's only... It's just him and his bodyguard left. It's just two guys left in that unit. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, well. Oh, well. Well, that that's that looks pretty solid. It looks like they have had enough. Yeah, that that's what it looks like. So, I'll take another victory. You know, we're, we're doing well. And the Mongol Khan, you know, he, if he's going to survive, that's one thing. But, man, his, he's not going to have good traits. You know, and maybe that's the issue right now. Maybe he has some pretty bad, you know, uh, eager to retreat trait or something like that. That's giving his army minus morale. Yeah, that, that might be what he's dealing with. That's going to do it. I only killed 195. I did capture 319. Uh, they have not been paying the ransom. So that's 319 men that probably will be killed. And then, yeah, lost 199. And how did we do? Yeah, let's see. We got some valor on these feudal knights. They captured a lot of men, yeah. These feudal knights also got a point of valor. These chivalric sergeants got 26 kills. Yeah, they did well. And then, what do we have? These huskarls got 95 kills. Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty gosh darn good. That's probably the unit that was, like, fighting three units in the rear of my army. All in all, that felt pretty good. And let's see, how did we do here? So we did sink 
Are, are the Egyptians attacking us? That's what that looks like. It looks like the Egyptians are now attacking us. Man, when it rains, it pours. Uh, looks like we at least won both battles against the Egyptians so far. And yes, we did sink the Hungarian boats here in the Adriatic. And then here in the Ionian Sea. So we won all of the naval fights, but now we are at war with Egypt as well. Man, oh man, just just really piles on, doesn't it? Let's see. Um, yes, so the ransom was refused, so that 311 men have uh, been executed. And the Khan just died of an illness. Okay, I didn't even know he was old enough for that. Uh, but his heir has taken over. And that's a little bit unfortunate because I liked having that Khan lead the armies. I feel like he was pretty weak. So I will have to take a look at the, his heir. Or the new Khan, should I say. The cathedral's finally finished here in Norway. And this is the building that's going to be giving plus three morale to all of my units that are trained here. Like, that's going to be pretty gosh darn good. And the baronial court is finished here in Denmark. I think that's the last building that I needed so that I can train chivalric knights. I think, maybe. Unfortunately, I'm too poor to train them. I can't, can't afford that shit right now. I mean, it's a really great unit, but... Hey, gunpowder! Everyone loves gunpowder. Thanks to the arcane skills of the alchemists, a new sus substance, gunpowder, is now available. While it may have the sulfurous reek of Satan when used, be fit only for peasants and make a horrendous racket. It can only be a matter of time before gunpowder appears on the battlefield. Yeah, probably not on my battlefields. I will use the artillery because it's amazing and it's not affected by rain. But because the weather is so inclement in this game, it's just really unfortunate. If you're not fighting in something that's not a desert or not arid, that is, you know, anything north of uh, Spain, Italy, and, and Turkey, essentially, those regions that are all north of those territories are all temperate or lush. And the weather is just too inclement. It just, it doesn't matter if you choose a fine, fine day, you're going to get rain. Almost every single time. In fact, thinking back to that last battle and the fact that I did not get rain is quite amazing now that I think of it. It just doesn't feel good. I I, would, I love using gunpowder in my armies. It's really, really fun, but it just sucks because you can't... You can like bring it as like a, you know, kind of a reserve kind of thing. Just in, like if you're like far into the battle and you know there's going to be no rain, then bring some gunpowder onto the field. Or if you're just going to be fighting in arid climates or the desert climates, sure, go for it. Like if you're going to play one of those factions, I think that works. But if you're going to be playing and fighting in Northern Europe, it, I just don't see it. it it's, it's, it, that's, that's my, probably one of my biggest gripes with this game is that they made the weather too random and sporadic. I understand, and I can't remember if I've gone on this rant before in this campaign. I have done this rant on other campaigns, um, so forgive me if you've already heard me do this before, but it's too bad. I understand like wanting to make the, t the weather a little bit more like up in the air, you know, you can, you can choose it, but it's not going to be perfect. I get that. I do. Um, but you can choose a weather pattern. You can choose fine weather and during the deployment phase, it will change to rain. Not even like mid battle. And that's what I would prefer. Like if it's like mid battle, fine. That's exciting. That's cool. You know, that still gives me half a battle to use my gunpowder, <laughs> you know? Um, but if you're just like getting set up and it starts to rain and you're like, <sighs> again, <laughs> rain again, you know, that's where, that's where it's just kind of, it gets a little bit uh, annoying. So it's too bad. But playing the, this Danish campaign, um, yeah, gunpowder is probably not going to play too big of a role other than the artillery pieces. So, yes, the Germans still do not want a ceasefire. Shame on them. I have another son on the way. That's, that's good. I will probably never live to see him uh, come of age, but maybe my, maybe my brother will. I had thought that the Egyptians attacked my boats. I could have sworn that they did, because I'm not seeing any Egyptian boats in the water right now, other than that one. But it's not saying that I'm at war with the Egyptians. What the hell is going on there? I can't have gotten an automatic ceasefire because I have boats that are right here. 
ordering uh, one of their regions. That's very confusing. That really is. Because I, I could have sworn that those were Egyptian boats that I was fighting, you know. They, they weren't Mongol or German boats, I don't think. That's, uh, yeah, that, that's that's perplexing. But, uh, you know, whatevs. Let's bring some boats. All right, let's get start getting boats off of these Hungarian regions. And, yep, you will be in the Straits of Sicily next turn. You come up here and kill this last boat. So catch him. And then kill him. And then we can get out of there in the next turn. And while that is happening, we can attack the French. <laughs> so we need to just, like, retreat. Like, basically... <laughs> this is silly. Like, once we get that auto ceasefire with the Hungarians, then we'll have to bring our ships, you know, out of these regions and come back up to, like, here, you know, so that we don't border France anywhere. So, yeah, it's going to get kind of silly here, but... Yeah, we're still losing almost 12,000. Ugh, yay, yay. But we do have all of our artillery now. So let's attack these regions. Yeah, let's declare, uh, declare war against France. You know, as if we don't have enough enemies as is. Let's get another war going here. Just to get this out of the way, you know. Like, I know he could say it's not ideal. Why bite off more than you could chew? Why not resolve this first? You know, why not resolve some wars before I start a new one? You know, yeah, but... You can't just keep waiting forever for the perfect opportunity, right? Sometimes you just have to, like, go when it's time. And I think right now it's go time. This is the title that has become available now that that cathedral... Is it that cathedral? Yeah, the cathedral has been finished here in Norway. And now it can grant someone the title of the Archbishop of Lund. Which is going to give acumen and piety. So, um, the most important thing about that is the acumen, right? I can make more money off of something. So, I was looking at this. And Sweden is the province that makes me the most money, by far. It's making me 2700 and that's even with a shit economy. So, or should I say a disrupted trade lines. So, I found this man is the governor of Sweden. Not bad, you might think. Six acumen and... He can get two plus from that title, right? Well, he is an alcoholic, which is unfortunate. Currently, that's minus two acumen. He's still six acumen, despite being an alcoholic. But this is going to get worse. I don't know how much worse, but I know that there's like dead drunk, I think. I, I think that it gets worse, is what I'm trying to say. I think it will like be minus three acumen at some point, I think. So, I thought it prudent to find someone who would be better. And I have come across someone who six acumen, so the same, right? But he's not an alcoholic, he's a thinker. Now, does this trait get any better? I, I don't know, actually. Maybe? I don't really care about the piety, honestly. I mean, the fact that he still has four, and he's going to get another three piety off of that trait, or, or that title, should I say? Should I care about piety? How's Norway, or Sweden, how's Sweden's? 67% zeal, holy shit, okay. So I guess piety does matter, but um, yeah, it'll be up to seven piety after that title, so that should be fine. Also, Sweden's loyalty should be fine, honestly. So I think this is the man for the job. Yeah, I think, I think it's gonna be, you'll be the new governor of Sweden. So, yep, sorry, uh, Lord Orvin Dilsen. You've been good, but you've hit the bottle a little bit too hard. So let's send my emissary, who are, who's conveniently right here, <laughs> located in Denmark. And yes, you can strip him of his office. And then we can give that to you. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Now let's get ready for our invasion of, of French-held Britain. As I am preparing my armies for my invasion of these French territories, I realize that I am really having to scrape the barrel when it comes to coming up, coming up with some generals for these <laughs> to lead these armies. Uh, is 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 a bad selection. We have a two-star general who is just loyal enough, I'd say, and he is a natural leader. 
that is good, but he is a secret blackmailer, which means that he's going to be losing three points of loyalty once it's discovered that he is a blackmailer. That's not good. <laughs> That's not good. Um, do I have a princess on the way? I do have a princess that's going to be of age in three years. So he might be a marriage candidate for her. Then I have a one-star general. Again, he's loyal enough, I'd say. He's a drinker. He's going to get worse. <laughs> I have a three-star general. He's an unhinged loon, so his army is going to be receiving minus three morale. It's bad. That's bad. That's <laughs> a bad group. I'm. I, I don't have anything else. Every, everyone else is defending my territories. You know, my best general, my six-star general, is defending Lithuania. I have a four-star defending Novgorod. My three-star peasant general is defending Prussia. Uh, this is a three-star general who is also an unhinged loon, but he's also a charismatic leader, so that counters that nicely. And then I have a three-star general down here, who is also an unhinged loon. It's bad. I'm tempted, I, I'm very tempted to send my brother, who happens to be a three-star general, who is not an unhinged loon. Imagine that. And uh, also, he's loyal enough, isn't he? You know, that's 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 fine. It's just, ugh, it's just really not a good idea to send him over right now. <laughs> you know, I should not do that. That'd be dumb. So, it's just going to be uh, Twiddle D and Twiddle Dumb leading the way over here. <laughs> and I, ugh, like, which, like, what's, like, what's worse? A two star natural leader? Like, that seems like my best general, honestly. <laughs> You know, the guy that's going to, like, turn on me very soon. <laughs> he seems like my best general. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Oh, man, this is just... Oh, that's so gnarly. Um, I need to send my best general to Wessex, probably. I'm just guessing. I don't know. Is, does it really matter? There's two stacks in Wessex, so that's how I'm doing that math. Send my best general there. Oh, man, sending... Sending the two star just seems bad, but I also feel like that's the way. That's the way. Yeah, hopefully nothing bad happens before I can marry him off to my daughter. So that does give loyalty. Yep, I'm gonna wage war against the French. And his army is gonna be following right behind, like that. And then let's send my one star to Wales, I suppose. Yeah. My one-star general goes to Wales. My drinker. Here's his army. And it's, you know, it's kind of a low-tech army. Feudal sergeants, not chivalric sergeants. Crossbows, Vikings. I have some royal knights just to fill in the heavy cav roll. And then, yeah, let's send my three-star loony guy over to Mercia. Send his army right behind. And, uh, yeah. There we go. So let's give him some mounted sergeants as backup. We can all use some light cav in our lives, right? So you go there, you go there, and you go there. And then, just as, like, some backup stacks, I got, I got some options here, so... Yeah, you guys can go to Wessex. I didn't do, I didn't put too much thought to my into my backup sacks. I just kind of grabbed some random stuff and maybe it went a little bit overboard on the archers, but there you go. Let's see, ballistas. You can go to Mercia, where there's a fort, and just a fort. Ooh, and that did not work. There. And then Wessex and Wales both have keeps, so let's split this up evenly. So one, two, one. There we go. And then. Even? Yeah, even. Even Steven, there we go. You go in, and then... Uh, you, uh, here? <laughs> Let me make sure that's right. Yeah, okay, that looks good. 
I don't know. I have some more Vikings. Yeah, I can send you guys over as well. Why not? Why not? I don't think I need them on my front lines, to be honest. So, I probably have enough troops defending my home territories. You go, you go, and then you go, and yeah, that's, that's fine, yeah. Yeah, please, take those territories. Reduce the upkeep on my boats. Make some money. Save my economy, please. The French are not going to be able to respond to this attack because they don't have any navies, and they are cut off. Oh, the Egyptians have finally attacked the Hungarians. Oh, yes, bless. Bless their hearts. Uh, yeah, I don't know where they think they're going to retreat to. I mean, they, they can't. The only place they can retreat is their fortifications. So, yep, Mercy is now mine. Same thing in Wales. Pillaged a bit of money there. And then we are going to get a fight here in Wessex. Yes. Uh, I do outnumber them, but they do have two, two waves, two stacks here, so... How are their troops? Their troops are okay. It's like fine. It's like a decent mix, isn't it? You know, some decent spears in here, some some cav, uh, some feudal knights, some mounted sergeants, a lot of cav in their first wave, honestly. Not a lot of missile units in the first wave, just the one unit of archers and the trebuchet or the catapult. Um, and then even in the second wave, there's not a lot of missile units. A beat up unit of pavis crossbows and then a beat up unit of regular crossbows. So the second wave is going to be a lot of light cav, and yeah, urban. this is urban militia, so that's a bad melee infantry unit, or a lower tier, should I say. So I feel pretty confident about this, <laughs> other than my my two-star general. What, what am I facing? I'm facing a one-star. Okay, so there's, there's that. Here we are in Wessex, and we have some spotted forests and some rolling hills. We are right on the beach as well. Beautiful map. Obviously, I cannot choose my terrain when I am attacking, but I did choose the weather. I did choose fine weather. Let's see if it holds up. And then right off the bat, let's just get my guys moved up. Spears in front, crossbows in the rear, just, just for now. Um, obviously, once we're formed up, I will move my crossbows to the front, but I just want to see how aggressive the enemy is going to be getting. Uh, you know, as we saw, Ooh, that's not right. Ooh, that's not right at all. Okay, I need to fix my groups here. So you are going to be group three. And then you are group four. So let's one, two, three, four, five, six. That looks good. All right, that looks good. All right, so Vikings here. That's group three. And then, yep, cavalry on this side. Here, and then here, and then general can be here. So it looks like they've taken their position, and they seem like they might be happy with that position. Huh. I wouldn't mind going around and trying to face them on open ground, just because I do have the crossbows, and if I could use those, that would be nice. I anticipate them having a melee advantage, possibly. Um, I, I do have good cav, but they have the numbers advantage with the cav. So I think fighting on open ground is going to be better for us. Now they are moving out of the forest and, huh, should I turn back around and, hmm, that's interesting. It's interesting that they've done that. I feel like, gosh, I'm, I'm tempted I'm tempted to move up to, like, this ridge here and try to get an engagement there. Um, gosh, it's, it's tempting, but they could catch me sort of, like, out, you know, if I don't make it to that ridge in time. And if I don't get my crossbows set up in time, they could charge me down pretty quick. So, I'm going to be have to, I'm going to have to be quick on my micro in regards to... Uh, potentially supporting with my cav if I need them to fill a gap and then also getting my spears in front of my crossbows if they do charge my alliance quickly but the 
the ability, if I could get like a slight high ground and just have my crossbows behind my front lines shooting over the heads of my spearmen, that could be nice. You know, that could be very, very nice. Oh, and I forgot about the catapult, as always, yeah. Jesus, how did that not how did that not kill anyone? <laughs> Alright, let's send these feudal sergeants over to deal with that catapult. Because I don't want any of that business. Don't want any of that business. Now let's see if I can get crossbows like here and then here. And then yeah, Vikings. Vikings here. Feudal Knights in reserve, and then Feudal Knights on this side threaten this side. Are they shooting? Or am I shooting? No one's shooting. Okay, no, I'm- my knights are killing them. Okay, that's- that's what's happening. That's what's happening. Okay, so we got Feudal Knights there, Feudal Knights in the back. That's gonna be the general back there, and then Mounted Sergeants. Then Feudal Sergeants, Chivalric Sergeants, Men at Arms. And yeah, we're getting rid of their catapults, and they want to bring their urban militia to support. Well, it's too late for that, I think. And now my crossbows should be able to get... Yeah, it looks like we're going to get some shots here. And yeah, now they're bringing forward their infantry. Like here, so let's bring spears here and then here. And try to get crossbows, like, behind them. And then... Let's go here and get ready to respond. Let's bring my cav back and around, like here, and make sure that you, they are running. And then, yep, let's get in here. You guys get back, please. And then get here, and then get here. And then, ooh, 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 ooh. Spears, ooh, that's not good. Spears into knights is not good. Let's go here, and then let's go... Uh, Vikings need to get in here, please. And then, yeah, let's get you guys back here. And let's get you guys back as well. Yeah, I don't want my knights fighting their spears. If I can get my Vikings fighting their spears, that'd be awesome. So let's go here, and then you go here. Let's try to lure you guys into the spears on this side. We're doing well on this side, so let's bring my spears over to help out here and then here. Boom, boom. And then uh, Vikings get into their feudal mended arms. Ooh, they're getting into my general. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I have Vikings that can help out here. Ooh, yeah. God damn. <laughs> Fucking. Uh. <laughs> Let's see, where did the attacker go? Okay, Jesus, I really lost myself there. <laughs> Alright, let's get nice up attacking there, and then... Feudal sergeants get into these guys. And then we got caught again, didn't we? Damn. Yeah, keep, keep trying to run away, please. And then, yep, attack there. Crossbows, uh, turn around and shoot at those chivalric sergeants. A uh, general's good, and... Alright, we are attacking there. Let's see, crossbows. Oh, uh, let's get feudal knights. Ooh, feudal sergeants are in the forest. Yep, get back, get back, get back, please. And it looks like we won in the center, so let's collapse on the mounted sergeants. Here, please. Here. And, let's see, do I have crossbows there? No, I do not. Yep, so you are shooting into the rear of the chivalric sergeants. That's fine. You are leading them on a merry, uh, merry chase. And feudal sergeants- Oh, I need to get vikings into that fight. So let's get one unit of Vikings fighting these Fetal Sergeants right here, please. Yeah, there we go. And then, yeah, let's chase into this. Let's push hard into that. And let's get crossbow supporting here. And then, let's see, Shivalic Sergeants, uh, you're still fighting Fetal Men Arms. All right, so you won that fight. Let's get in here and push, push, push. Vikings, turn around and fight this and get a, a collapse on the rear. And then, that's good. All right, sweet. Now let's get crossbows ready to shoot at these feudal sergeants over there. And now they're bringing their feudal knights into a charge. Do I have... Let's see, you shoot at the feudal knights there. And this is super chaotic. Are we still fighting this forever? Okay, finally that's done. So let's get up here. Vikings can fight against these feudal sergeants. Bring up my general to support. And feudal... <laughs> nice, just keep, keep going here. And... I need one of these units of Vikings to kill these goddamn feudal sergeants that are just in my- just trolling me in my back. So let's get here. And my guys are running away. That's not good. 
That's not good. So let's turn around to here. God damn, they're breaking my guys. Shit. Oh, I feel nice back here doing nothing. That sucks. That feels really bad. That feels really bad. Ugh. Yeah, you guys need to move. You as well. Like, hit, hit the front and try to hold them. This is still salvageable. Crossbows are, yeah, that's obviously crossbows are gonna run away. Um, a charge of two Feudal Knights is pretty strong. And yeah, Vikings clearing up Feudal Mended Arms is good. These Feudal these Vikings, oh man, they're gonna, see, they're getting charged, so that's tough. Let's see, can you fight here, please? And these crossbows, you keep shooting. And general, let's see, general, fight these hoblars, actually, because you can, you can beat hoblars, and Vikings get in here. Yep, Vikings get here, and then, yep, you go there. And, are you guys running away? Yep, feudal knights, um, get in here and attack those mounted sergeants. And, uh, ay ay ay, wow, this is, um, uh, holy, surely, wow, we killed the enemy general, wow, that's huge. So, we sh might be able to break them now. That might be the break that we needed. So yeah, they're all running away. We got a little break there. They're running away. Holy smokes. Wow, what a battle. Jesus, that was that was hectic. <laughs> that was uh, that was a hectic one. That's and I and I knew it too. I was afraid like I saw this distance, it was like that's too short of a distance to like get set up and to do a lot of damage, you know? And uh, yeah, the AI proved once again that they are capable. They're very capable of pulling off like a very powerful charge in this game. Uh, let's see, Feudal Knights attacking my Vikings. They're gonna break them. They are gonna break them, so let's get my crossbows shooting here, and then crossbows. Let's see, let's bring you up, and then you, Chivalric Sergeants, turn around and help out against these uh, Feudal Knights, and Vikings turn around and help out against these Feudal Knights. We have Monta Sergeants back here that are fighting my crossbows, so let's try to get my Feudal Knights helping out. And then, can I shoot with crossbows? And then, where's my general? I need to get him, wherever he is. Ugh. Ay, ay, ay. Lost him. I lost him. Alright, I need these, these, I need to get, they need to get back. <laughs> these guys need to, like, stop chasing. <laughs> get back here. And yeah, Fiddle Sergeants get back as well. Let's see, Vikings chasing Fiddle Sergeants, that's, I'm okay with that. And... Yeah, trying to kill these Fiddle Knights. Gun them down, gun them down! I'm down. They broke. Are they gonna break? Oh, they. Well, we have support right here. Yeah, we'll we'll get we'll get rid of them. We will get rid of them. And then yeah, we broke them on this side. Good, sweet. Let's get our guys back here and then here. General, God, dude, I told you get get the hell back. No, actually, no. I, I told you to attack. Yeah, that's what I. Yep, yep. You were just following orders. And then a feudal knight. You go after these archers, please. Try not to get caught by enemy spears. No, don't do it. Just it's too risky. It's too risky. Now I need to like basically <laughs> withdraw almost my entire army, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and just bring on reinforcements. You know, like pretty much everyone has to has to get back. So let's see. What can I keep? Like you guys, maybe I can keep that. What about my? Yeah, there's really not much left. There's there. That's that, and then... Whew, that was... I took a lot of losses on that. Uh, let's get some reinforcements. Let's move this up, and here. And bring up what I can. Now, can I hold against this while I'm waiting for reinforcements? Probably not, if I'm being honest. So let's... Put this rally point back a little bit, and then let's change all of my army, like, yeah, you guys all come up here. You come here, you come here, and then, yeah, let's try to just form up on this little hill here. Oh, this was a convenient spawn, actually, getting my reinforcements coming in from the flank like this, because <laughs> these enemy reinforcements are getting a little bit danger close to my army that's sort of withdrawing to this hill right here, and you might need to come in and, like, intercept. Now, mounted sergeants, I think, can beat one unit of hoblars. I don't know about two, but with the help of spears, maybe they can do that. And then, yeah, javelins as well. Like, you guys come up. Archers. Archers get back. Archers just get back. 
Yeah, I'll just get back to that hill. But, yeah, let's do like... Hmm, this is getting a little risky here. Let's do spears here and javelins here just to cover the retreat. Uh, Mounted sergeants, how are you guys going to do? You're... You're doing okay, but fighting two units is going to be tough. And then what happens here? Hobblers, where's the rest of this unit? Did they just get by? Did they just... Yeah, where did those hobblers come from? I'm not really sure. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to sacrifice this unit of Mounted Sergeant, essentially. Just holding back those guys, and then... Let's have these javelins. Toss some javelins into these Mounted Sergeants. Yeah, there we go. That's a good toss. There we go. That's perfect. Break them. And then... Uh, get around here, get around here, and then try to help out against these hobblers on this side. Oh man, these mounted sergeants are heroes. Absolute heroes. Holding off just all of these hobblers. And then... Nope, you guys go back into fighting, and then you guys come up. And yep, throw another set of javelins into the face of those hobblers. And oh, they're coming back in for another charge. Yeah, can we get some javelins in? Let's kill some hobblers here. It is starting to rain as well. And I just, I feel like I need to hold my position on this hill, unfortunately. I can't, I'm, I'm not strong enough. I can't, I can't go down this hill. So, it looks like my mounted sergeants, are they still fighting? Oh my god, absolute chads. Absolute chads. Alright, get out of there, get out of there. Yep, wow. What heroes, what absolute heroes. Yep, get you guys out and I will withdraw you in a moment. And then, yeah, now it's now these guys are being heroes. Yep, javelins are tossing into the urban militia. Spears are fighting up against two units of cavalry. Uh, javs get some tosses into these hoblars and try to break. If we can get these cav off my spears, then maybe we can save these units. And now, all right, you're out of javelins. Charge in there and try to get a break on them. Oh, that's too bad. My feudal sergeants broke. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, my javelins aren't going to be able to do much here. Yeah, they're, they're, they can do okay as flankers, but they're not going to really hold the line, unfortunately. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, well, those units really bought me time, you know, they got me up on this hill. And now I just got to hold the line here until I can get some more reinforcements on. Now we got hobblers coming in and we got some pretty decimated crossbow units that are shooting down to them. It doesn't look like they're doing any damage right now. And we have some feudal knights and some vikings that can get a charge in here. So let's go, go, go. Let's charge down these hobblers. And then vikings here can go in here. And that shouldn't be too much of an issue breaking those units. I don't think so. We can get crossbows back a little bit. And yeah, crossbows can get back a little bit here. Actually, you can still stay. And Vikings can turn around and get a, a flank in on these hoblars. Now we have a bunch of urban militia. So yeah, crossbows should do a good job against those urban militia because they have like no armor. So there, there, there. Vikings get back, please. And then let's get these feudal knights back as well. That urban militia is now broken and they have run away. Urban militia running away as well. And where's our reinforcements coming on? Where are they? I'm not seeing oh there they are. Perfect clutch. This is a good this is a good spawn. Yeah, this is good. Like getting them right here. And the fact that we chose this hill to be our little spot to fortify, it's working out pretty well. So let's get these feudal sergeants fortifying this spot. We have another unit of hoblars coming on. So let's get some shots in. With our crossbows here and then here, and yeah, we don't we don't have much to stop them, so <laughs> we just have to use what we have. So let's get the char counter charge with my mounted sergeant and my feudal knights. My Vikings are right there. Crossbows can shoot right into the flanks. Oh, there's two units of them. Oh, one of the units gonna get around. Oh shit, that's okay. I didn't know there was two units. My bad. My bad, my bad. All right, let's get my Vikings over and let's get some chivalric sergeants over as well. Uh, I don't really want to use my general in combat any more than I have to, but let's get my feudal knights over here. Yeah, I have some of them available. And let's see. Okay, luckily they're running away 
And good. Good. Looks like we broke most... Yeah. Looks like they all broke. Good. Nice. And that is looking like a victory. Yeah. Awesome. So they are fleeing the field. Hey, I'll take it. I will take it. That was a that was a tough fight. That was a tough fight. And you see what I mean? Like, crossbows just never... Man, it, they just... They don't have that same stopping power that the guns do in Shogun Total War. And so it can be very hard for me to get enough damage done in the short time that it takes before the enemy reaches my lines. You know, like a melee heavy army can really just get in there and cause you a lot of issues. And they caused some issues for sure. Yeah, so I lost 956. Hot damn. Killed 767, captured 153. Uh, let's see, Feudal Knights, yep, they got, they did well, two points of valor on both of those units. Crossbows, they got 47 kills, that's, that's not bad. Yeah, I, I, okay, here we go, like, crossbows, 57, 47, that's okay, isn't it? And then 22 and 12, not so much, not so much. Uh, Vikings were absolute chads, yeah, they did very, very well. Yeah, they were, they were a very important unit in this, in this battle. And then, yeah, mounted sergeants, they're just absolute clutch. The guys, they, they only had five men left, and they just saved my army. Oh, what heroes. Yeah, tough fight. Fun fight. Very fun. Wessex is now mine. All right, we sunk that last Hungarian boat here in the Ligurian Sea. And, uh, yeah, the French refused a ransom of 969 men who could not escape these provinces. Oh, man. <laughs> and yeah, we did strip that man of his office, so we can give that to the more, um, that, uh, the man who deserves it more. Let's see, we're catching Egyptian assassins here in Lithuania. Sweden, Spear Makers Workshop completed, okay. Citadel's finished here in Novgorod. And now we can give this title, ooh, this gives two points of acumen. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So we can bring this six acumen governor. Wait, okay. I need to make sure this is going to the right guy. Okay. Oh, okay. So the governor of Denmark must have just died in that last battle. And yeah, this is for Sweden. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure this is going to the right guy. Okay, so yep, him, You want, I want you to be the Swedish, so 1551, loyalties, 196, then 190, 2094, now let's give him a, an additional two points of acumen, up to uh, 2700, okay, nice, I'll take it. And now we need to find another governor for Denmark, so I guess he must have died in that last battle. And, I, yeah, I guess we can go in here. This is going to last for two turns before this falls. This is going to last for two turns before that falls, and another two turns. Well, we can just, we can fight all of them. Why not? We brought the artillery. We may as well. And we want to get this over with. You know, we want to save ourselves some time. The sooner that we can end this war with the French, the sooner that we can go go back to trading with them. And I don't even want to look. Uh, we're not losing as much as we thought we were. I mean, no, that's not much more than we already were losing, right? So, uh, <laughs> don't want to say it's a good thing, but it's okay. You know, it's, it's kind of okay. Now, let's break contact with the Hungarians. Let's make this official. Let's get out of there. And that should do it. Like, getting that out of there should be fine. No, no, you need to go here as well. Okay. And that should be enough to break contact with the Hungarians. That should get us our auto ceasefire. And I, I suppose we should finish off Ireland as, as well before we get our auto ceasefire with the French. You know, that, that would make the most sense, I suppose. And it was not too hard to find a capable replacement for the governor of Denmark, Tok Bluetooth. He's already a five acumen captain, and yeah, materialist is giving him plus one acumen. That's that's good. That's probably going to improve, I think. So yeah, let's give him. So Denmark's making twelve hundred, and if we give him that, 
What just happened? Did I give it to the wrong guy? Why did the income not improve at all? Um, it was 1200 before, right? I, I am very confused by what just happened. I feel like that did not move at all. Unless I'm just imagining things. That was very, very, very bizarre. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, we're losing the same amount of money. What, what just happened? I, I gave the governorship to a man with five acumen, boosted him up to seven acumen, and the province is making the same amount of money? Is it just because there's no trade at all? Well, no, that wouldn't make sense because ac acumen is acumen. Even if it's just like farm income, it should still make some money. Oh, wow, that was really weird. Yeah, because there is still some trade. Like, I'm trading with that province at least. That was, I don't know what just happened. That was very bizarre. I don't know if that was a glitch or, or what. That was fascinating. Well, we are not out of this yet. There is still some work to be done before we can fix our economy and uh, fix our overall situation. You know, not that I feel like I'm in dire straits right here, other than the, you know, the whole succession issue. That's a little bit nerve wracking, but I feel like it's going to be okay. Like just by the skin of our teeth, I feel like this prince, Prince Olaf, I think that he is going to be of age before his, you know, two older relatives die of old age. That's how I'm feeling. So how old is he again? He's eight. So in eight more years, we will be fine. And hopefully by the time he inherits his throne, hopefully we have things uh, situated a little bit better for him. And uh, yeah, we will, we will keep our fingers crossed. The Egyptians attacking the Hungarians hopefully will help. I am hoping so. Uh, that could relieve some pressure. I wonder if that would even force the Hungarians to move some reinforcements from Moldavia. If that were to happen, I wonder if the Mongols would feel more likely to attack the Hungarians? Uh, probably not, because if they were looking at the weaker opponent, they would just go Poland, right? You know, like they're looking pretty, pretty weak, but yeah, in any case. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be, uh, that's going to all have to wait till next time. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this one, and thank you very much for watching. This has been Conestep playing Medieval Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye.